Now, if I wanted to create another virtual machine, well, it's actually quite simple. All I have to do is right click on my server, select new virtual machine. And I get the new virtual machine wizard. And I get a before you begin screen, which is just your real basic, hey, this is what you know, you're about to do. You see this in all sorts of different wizards. Go ahead and click on next. Now I can give this virtual machine a name. So I'm just going to call this demo VM, okay? Because this is not something that I'm going to use anywhere other than this particular lesson. By default, when you first set up Hyper-V, and, and I'll show you this in just a moment, but you establish a default location for your virtual machines. And you can see it here. It's grayed out though, okay? On my D drive, in a folder called Hyper-V, I have another folder called VMs. And that's where I store my virtual machines. So if I leave this open right here, I'm gonna go ahead and click Start to get me into the Start screen. And I'm gonna click on Computer. And you see on my D drive, I have a folder called Hyper-V. And then there I have a folder called VMs. And as long as we're looking at this, I will show you that I also have a folder called VHDs, which stands for Virtual Hard Disks. Okay, we'll, we'll look at that in just a moment. And then DVDs. And this is where I keep my DVD images for any of the particular virtual machines. You know, if I need to mount the ISO image, which is like inserting a DVD into the drive, well, I have them all in one place here. If I go into my VMs folder, you'll see that I have a virtual machines and a snapshots directory. And we're not going to go into great detail from this direction. We will come back and revisit this through the Hyper-V Manager. If we take a look at VHDs, here we can see all the various files. And that's what's very cool about virtualization. These are just files that represent virtual storage. And you may remember from the local storage lesson that I had mentioned that there's also something called virtual storage and that we would cover it in this lesson. Well, virtual storage is very cool because it's a file. Okay, this right here is a file. It's, it's a hard disk image file that represents the hard disk for the Windows 8 client virtual machine. Uh, if I go into my DVDs folder, again, just showing you these are my ISO images. And these are actually, this is both Windows 8 and Windows Server 2012. And it's two different versions. That's all it is. When I first started playing around with this course and, and getting this course ready for you, we had not had the full release of Windows Server 2012 or Windows 8 yet. So I was using a pre-release. And then once it came out, oh, I went ahead and grabbed the real thing. So that's what these ISO images are. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close out of Explorer there and jump back over to where we were in our new virtual machine wizard. What I was saying was you can pick your default location, but if you decide for whatever reason this particular machine needs to be located somewhere else, and you simply check the box saying I want to store it somewhere else, and then you pick where you want to put it. Okay, but the defaults are that you're going to keep all your virtual machines in the same place, and that is a good practice. So I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Now we need to assign memory. How much memory or RAM do we want to give to this virtual machine? And the decision has to do with, well, depending on what operating system you're going to install, and then also, what are you going to do with the machine? Okay, so there is no one correct answer to what I would put in the memory here. It's a matter of understanding what the machine's requirements are. So just to take you know, pretty much any machine these days, a standard machine, probably you should have somewhere in the area of, you know, two gig of memory. So I'll put 2048 megabytes. And you'll notice it says that that's startup memory. Okay. And this has to do with uh, a concept that was introduced late in Windows Server 2008. If you went to, I believe it was Windows Server 2008 R2, I think you even had to go further than that. I think you had to go to Service Pack 1. You could get paging memory. And, and I will tell you, I could be wrong about the exact level of where you could get that in Windows Server 2008. But what I can tell you is in Windows Server 2012, we have this, which is where we're really just setting 
the minimum memory needed to start up the machine successfully. We can use dynamic memory, and when using dynamic memory, this allows the machine to make a request for more memory if it's running out. Okay, so this virtual machine can make a request to the host computer, okay, the computer that, you know, I actually have physically here in my office. If there's more memory available, dynamic memory allows this virtual machine to make a request for more when it needs it. So this is actually pretty cool stuff, the, the paging memory and the dynamic memory, because with the original versions of Hyper-V, if you go back to Windows Server 2008 or further back, the problem was you had to truly guess how much memory the machine needed. And you always would find yourself in a situation where either you underguessed and then the machine didn't perform very well, or you would overguess, which is what was done more often than not, right? You, you didn't want slow performance and memory didn't cost that much, so we just went ahead and said, well, I'll, I'm going to give it too much memory because then I know it'll do its job. But then you were wasting it. Okay, now this is a lot better because we can much more efficiently use the memory on our system. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Now here is where you set up networking, and you're only going to be able to do this if you have networking set up on the host. Okay, so that's something else that I'm going to show you how to do. But I do have networking set up on the host, and I will show you that I have these three possible networks. And I'm not going to go into great explanation about them other than to say, look, these two are both private set up for a specific circumstance. And I will also tell you that those private networks have nothing to do with anything I've done in this course. It was something else I was doing when playing around with this particular computer. Whereas this guy right here, this points to the actual external connection of the physical computer. And this is the one I have been using throughout the course, and that's why I've been live in every capacity. If I needed to get out to the internet, I could go out to the internet. Anything I needed to do, it was live. Now, we'll talk more about networking in a little bit. Now I need to assign the virtual hard disk, right? We were just talking about this. Uh, virtual hard disk, this is virtual storage. So the name, it defaults to the name of the virtual machine. Not a bad idea, because as you saw in that folder, all of the virtual hard disks had names that I could quickly and easily recognize what machine those disks went with. I want you to note the extension here of VHDX, whereas older versions of Hyper-V would be VHD, and we will talk about the differences between those two, which is primarily size difference. We'll, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. But VHDX is brand new to Windows Server 2012. You'll see there's a default location, which we already looked at. And then what I've been doing is I've been assigning 200 gigabyte hard drives to each of my virtual machines. Okay, that, that's what I had created for each of my virtual machines that I used in this course. There was nothing specific about that. That's just something I happened to pick because I knew it was large enough to satisfy the needs of what I wanted to demonstrate. If you have an existing virtual disk in place, you could just point to that. Or you could say, hey, I want to create this machine without a virtual disk and I'll attach it later. All right, so you do have the option of really doing whatever you want, you know, separating what you do with virtual storage from your virtual machine itself. So I'm going to go ahead and do the 200 gig, and we'll create that now. Click Next. And this is where I get to choose what am I going to do as far as an operating system. I could choose to install it later, which I will tell you is what I do 99% of the time. I will explain why in just a moment, but I want to go through these other choices. I could choose to install an operating system from a CD, DVD, ROM. So if I have, let's say, Windows Server sitting in the actual physical DVD, ROM drive on this computer, I could do that. Or I could point to an image file where I would find that. This is going to seem extremely out of date, but you could install the operating system from a boot floppy disk. All right, so I guess if you're creating a virtual machine with an older operating system that you can still boot off floppy, go right ahead. Or you could also install your operating system from a network-based installation server. Now, why do I do this one? The reason I install an operating system later is just from experience. I don't have anything to 100% validate why this works the way it does, but in my experience, 
when you choose to install the operating system as part of the creation of the VM, maybe I just have bad luck, but I, got, I, I have about a 50-50 success rate. It fails all the time during installation. Whereas if I say don't put an operating system on, I'll add it later, I have a nearly 100% success rate. And I will also tell you that I'm not alone in this. I have a number of coworkers, associates, friends, whomever, who have come to me and said, hey, Ed, uh, you know, I'm trying to create this virtual machine and I'm following the steps and the operating system doesn't seem to want to install when I do it as part of the creation of a virtual machine. And every time I give them the advice, install it later. And, and you'll see, by the way, how easy it is to install later. And it just works. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next and finish. And it'll go through and it's pretty much configuring this virtual machine. And there it is. I now have my demo virtual machine.